Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 2, Chapter 6, entitled The Cosmic Manifestation, Text 18. So, mrit, so, mrityasya bayasye so, mrityasya bayasye so, mrityasya bayasye so, mrityasya bayasye so, Purushasya Dharatyaya Somrityasya Bayasyesho Martyamanam Yet Atyagat Mahi Maisha Tato Brahman Purushasya Dharatyaya Please chant. So Mrithas Yabayasya Show. So Mrithas Yabayasya Show. Martyam Annam Yat Atyagat. Martyam Annam Yat Atyagat. Mahi Maisha Tato Brahman. Mahi Maisha Tato Brahman. Purushasya Duratyaya Purushasya Duratyaya Somritasya Bhaktyasya Somritasya Bhaktyasya Shesho Vanshman Anam Siddhatyaga Vartyam Annam Yadatyaga Mani Maisha Tato Brahman Mani Maisha Tato Brahman Purushasya Duratyaya Somritasya Vayakyesho Somritasya Vayakyesho Matyam 
So synonyms, saha, he the Lord, amritasya of deathlessness, abhyasya of fearlessness, ishaha the controller, martyam dying, anam fruit of action, yat. One who has, has. atyagat has descended, mahima the glories, eishaha of him, tataha therefore, brahman, o brahmana narada, purushasya. Of the Supreme Personality, Duratyayaha, immeasurable. Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of immortality and fearlessness, and he is transcendental to death and the fruit of actions of the material world. O Narada, O Brahmana, it is therefore difficult to measure the glories of the Supreme Person. Purport. The glories of the Lord and the transcendental 75% of the Lord's internal potency are stated in the Padma Purana, Uttarakhanda. It is said there that those planets in the spiritual sky which comprises the 75% expansion of the internal potency of the Lord are far, far greater than those planets in the material universe. The material universe is composed of the external potency of the Lord. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the total universes and the external potency of the Lord are compared to a bucket full of mustard seeds. One mustard seed is calculated to be a universe itself. In one of the universes in which we are now living, the number of planets cannot be counted by human energy. And so how can we think of the sum total in all the universes which are compared to a bucket full of mustard seeds. And the planets in the spiritual sky are at least three times the number of those in the material sky. Such planets, being spiritual, are in fact transcendental to the material modes. Therefore, they are constituted in the mode of unalloyed goodness only. The conception of spiritual bliss, Brahmananda, is fully present in those planets. Each of them is eternal. <laughs> Each of them is eternal, indestructible, and free from all kinds of limitations experienced in the material world. Each of them is self-illuminating and more powerfully dazzling than, if we can imagine, the total sunshine of millions of mundane suns. The inhabitants of those planets are liberated from birth, death, old age, and diseases, and have full knowledge of everything. They are all godly and free from all sorts of material hankerings. They have nothing to do they have nothing to do there except to render transcendental loving service <coughs> to the Supreme Lord Narayan, who is the predominating deity <coughs> of such Vaikuntha planets. Those liberated souls are engaged incessantly in singing songs mentioned in the Samaveda. Vadai Sangapad Kramo Panashadir Gayanti Yam Samagaha. <coughs> All of them are personifications of the five Upanishads. Tripad Vibhuti, or the 75% known as the internal potency of the Lord, is to be understood as the kingdom of God far beyond the material sky. 
And when we speak of Padvibhuti, or the 25% comprising his, his external energy, we should understand that this refers to the sphere of the material world. It is also said in the Padma Purana that the kingdom of Tripad Vibhuti is transcendental, whereas the Pad Vibhuti is mundane. Tripad Vibhuti is eternal, whereas the Pad Vibhuti is transient. <clears throat> the Lord and His eternal servitors in the transcendental kingdom all have eternal forms which are auspicious, infallible, spiritual, and eternally youthful. In other words, there is no birth death, old age, and disease. And that eternal land, that eternal land is full of transcendental enjoyment and full of beauty and bliss. And this very fact is also corroborated in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam and the transcendental nature is described as Amrita, as described in the Vedas, Uttamrita Uttamrita Vasyashanaha the Supreme Lord is the Lord of Immortality, or in other words, the Lord is immortal, and because He is the Lord of Immortality, He can award immortality to His devotees. In the Bhagavad Gita 8.16, the Lord also assures that whoever may go to His abode of immortality shall never return to this mortal land of threefold miseries. The Lord is not like the mundane Lord. The mundane Master or Lord never enjoys equally with His subordinates, nor is a mundane lord immortal, nor can he award immortality to his subordinate. The Supreme Lord, who is the leader of all living entities, can award all the qualities of his personality unto his devotees, including immortality and spiritual bliss. In the material world, there is always anxiety or fearfulness in the hearts of all living entities. But the Lord, being himself the supreme and fearless, also awards the same quality of fearlessness to his pure devotees. Mundane existence is itself a kind of fear because in all mundane bodies the effects of birth, death, old age, and disease always keep a living being compact in fear. In the mundane world there is always the influence of time which changes things from one stage to another and the living entity originally being avikara or unchangeable suffers a great deal on account of changes due to the influence of time. The changing effects of eternal time are conspicuously absent in the immortal kingdom of God, which should therefore be understood to have no influence of time and therefore no fear whatsoever. In the material world, so-called happiness is a result of one's own work. One can become a rich man by dint of one's own hard labor, and there are always fear and doubts as to the duration of such acquired happiness. But in the kingdom of God, no one has to endeavor to attain a standard of happiness. <coughs> happiness is the nature of the spirit, as stated in the Vedanta Sutras, Ananda Mayobhyasat. The spirit is by nature full of happiness. Happiness in spiritual nature always increases in volume with a new phase of appreciation. There is no question of decreasing the bliss. Such unalloyed spiritual bliss is nowhere to be found within the orbit of the material universe, including the Janaloka planets, or for that matter, the Maharloka or Satyaloka planets, because even Lord Brahma is subject to the laws a fruit of actions and the law of birth and death it is therefore stated here the Ratyayaha or in other words spiritual happiness in the eternal kingdom of God cannot be imagined even by the great brahmacharis or sannyasis who are eligible to be promoted to the planets beyond the region of heaven or the greatness of the Supreme Lord so great that it cannot be imagined, even by the great brahmacharis or sannyasis, but such happiness is factually attained by the unalloyed devotees of the Lord by His divine grace. Om again, Timin, Desya, Gananjana, Shalakoya, Chakshu, Militamina, Tasmai, Shi, Gurvena, Maha. 
Vanchika Patiribisha, Kripa Sindhubia Evicha, Patipanam Pavinibyo, Vaishnavim, Yo Namo Namaha, Chai Chi Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita, Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi, Gora Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I'll read the verse one more time. So mrityasya bayasi sho martyam anam yad atyagat mahi mai sha tato brahman purushasya durati yaha. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of immortality and fearlessness, and he is transcendental to death and the fruit of actions of the material world. O Narada, O Brahmana, it is therefore difficult to measure the glories of the Supreme Person. I'll just take a quick drink of water. attempt to say something for my own purification and hopefully for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas. So towards the the last chapter or the last sentence of the verse O Narada O Brahmana it is therefore difficult to measure the glories of the Supreme Person. In the fifth canto the chapter entitled the glories of Ananta Shesh. It's uh, in one of the purports, Prabhupada is quoting from the Chaitanya Bhagavat, and he explains that Lord Ananta Dev is known as Shesh, which actually means the unlimited end, because he ends our passage uh, through this material world, and simply by chanting his glories, everyone can be liberated. That's what it says in the purport. And he also quotes another part of the Chaitanya Bhagavat, chapter 1, text 68 and 69 in the purport, where it says, Although Ananta Shesh has been chanting the glories of Krishna since time immemorial, he has still not come to an end. And to this very day, Lord Ananta continues to chant the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and still he finds no end to them. So as we speak, you meditate on this today as we're performing our routine activities that Ananta Shesh is glorifying Lord Chaitanya as we speak and he cannot find an end to his glories in this purport <coughs> it's comparing the universe these material universes to little mustard seeds and in the Bhagavatam the fifth canto again chapter 25 Shukadeva Goswami says another thing about mustard seeds and Anantadev. He says that this great universe, situated on one of Lord Anantadev's thousands of hoods, appears just like a white mustard seed. It is infinitesimal compared to the hood of Lord Ananta. And we all know, if we've read Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Madhi Lila, when Vasudev Dutt, the pure devotee of Lord Chaitanya, the Lord Chaitanya said it was no other than Prahlad Maharaj. Vasudev Dutt's only benediction that he wanted was to take all the sinful reactions of every jiva within the universe and he was prepared to suffer in hell for billions and billions of births so that all the other living entities can be liberated. And it actually says that because Lord Chaitanya knew Vasudev Dutt's heart was completely pure and when he was asking for this benediction he was completely honest. He was really willing to do this. And if we actually think about it, it's inconceivable. Sometimes we're not even willing to take on our own karma. But he wanted to take the karma of all the living entities, every microscopic germ. It's, it's uh, unlimited, almost unlimited jivas. He was 
prepared to do that. And then Lord Chaitanya, he said, there's no problem. Uh, because of your desire alone, the whole universe is liberated. And he says, of the millions of mustard seeds floating in, in a huge pot, if one seed is lost, the loss is not at all significant. Similarly, if one universe is lost, it is not significant to Lord Krishna. And then he continues to say, to say nothing of one universal mustard seed. Even if all the universes and the material energy maya are destroyed, Krishna does not even consider the loss. I remember one time, uh, Prabhupada was asked a question. It was either in like a class or some room conversation that what if everybody went back to Godhead? Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't that like be not good? Because then why would the material world be here? And well, first of all, Srila Prabhupada said that don't worry, that will never happen because there will always be living entities that want to come to this material world. But then he said, even if that did happen, uh, what's the loss? It's just like a prison. So if there was no prison and no prisoners, then it would be a happy society. You know, so what would be the loss of that? And in, uh, in the room conversation in Los Angeles, there was one guest who came and he asked Prabhupada that uh, because this verse is talking about the Tripad Vibhuti, the Ekapad Vibhuti, so this is kind of related. The guest asked Prabhupada, how many souls come to the material world that fall from the spiritual world? And then Srila Prabhupada said, 10%. But then he thought about it for a couple of seconds, and he said, actually, less than 10%. So we're actually the minority uh, sometimes, because we're in the material world, if we're dressed in our Vaishnava attire, going about our day, people look at us strange because they think that we're the minority in this world. But actually, if you look at all of existence, the conditioned souls are the minority, and uh, being a devotee is natural for everybody. And in, in the same time frame, Vishnu John Swami also asked in uh, Prabhupada's room in Los Angeles, you can actually watch this on a video, because Vishnu John was asking that since Bhakti Nod Thakur was a pure devotee, why didn't he come to the West earlier? You know, he could have came and, and, uh, and started this movement. So why was he waiting? And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, Bhakti Nod Thakur is a Maha Bhagavat. If he wanted to, he can liberate the entire universe. But he said, but he, he left the chance, he left the work for us to do. He's giving us the chance to engage in devotional service. <clears throat> okay, I wrote down some notes here to prepare for the class. The, prob the definition of Prabhupada, be a couple of definitions, but one of them is at whose feet all other masters sit uh, in reverence. So we may have many exalted devotees and spiritual masters within our movement, but all of them pay obeisances, dandavats, and on respect for A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. And we're actually taking part in a historical conquest, something that has not happened ever in this, uh, at least within this day of Lord Brahma, that someone who had actually came to the West, uh, the country of Malechas, and turned Malechas into pure devotees, and in turn created pure devotees who can create other pure devotees. It's like a domino effect, like Lord Chaitanya was doing also when he was traveling in South India. Whoever saw him chanting became a pure Vaishnava, and then when they, those people went back to their village, whoever saw them became a pure Vaishnava, and then in turn, whoever saw those people became a pure Vaishnava. So it was like an electrical link. It was a parampara system. Of course, that's, that was a magical time when Lord Chaitanya was on the planet. Anybody who just saw him became pure. But the same effect is still here. Um, maybe not as quick and so dramatic, but uh, Prabhupada is offering everybody the opportunity to become pure Vaishnavas themselves and to give that opportunity to others. And in Vyas Puja, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada, with all humility, with tears in his eyes, was explaining 
that actually he has nothing to give to his spiritual master. But all he has to give is his own disciples. So this is actually uh, the most ecstatic and most fulfilling offering to the spiritual master. We may give the spiritual master a garland and a nice feast and so many facilities and all this is very wonderful and nice and we should do those things. But uh, what pleases the spiritual master, especially in our line, is when we offer not only a garland of flowers, but a garland of jivas, you know, offering our, the disciples to the lotus feet of the spiritual master. And this is actually the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to become a guru and liberate everybody in the land. And in a letter to Sudama in 1970, <coughs> Prabhupada said that Lord Chaitanya has said that this movement will spread in every town and village. And then he said, this means that in every town and village all over the world, there are many candidates who are just waiting for this message. So people are just waiting for us to approach them. And Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he gives the definition of a liberated soul. Iha yasya hirir dasye karmana manasagira nikilasya prabhasa su jivan mukta uchite. And he says, anybody who's engaged with mind, body, and words and the service of Krishna is considered a liberated soul. So similarly, in a Chaitanya Charitamrita purport, Prabhupada is explaining that one who executes Mahaprabhu's mission must be considered to be eternally liberated. He is a transcendental person and he does not belong to this material world. Such a person engaged in the deliverance of the total population is as magnanimous as Mahaprabhu himself. In the chapter, Deliverance of Gopinath Patanayaka, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, I thought this was a, a nice definition of our ISKCON movement. There's a verse in here. So try to meditate on this as the definition of ISKCON, what I'm about to read to you. Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami says that the innumerable glorious followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu brought a constant flood of the desert-like hearts of the unfortunate with an inundation of ecstatic love. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the most merciful incarnation. All glories to Lord Nityananda, whose heart is always compassionate. A nice definition of our movement. And a similar uh, letter, this is related to the letter that he wrote to Sudama, but this one's in 1969. It's a letter to Bhagavan Das on September 22nd. He says that actually in every town and city there are many, many devotees of Krishna. Now it is our business to go around the world, wherever people are congregating, and pick up these sincere souls. The world is suffering for want of this knowledge of Krishna consciousness, and we experience practically <laughs> that many people will take to this spiritual line simply if we make this information available to them. <clears throat> Prabhupada also says in one letter within this book, Radhadamadar Vilas, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find the exact page, but I just read it the other day. It's a letter to his disciple. He said that if you just turn one person to Krishna consciousness, you're going back to Godhead is guaranteed. And that could be, uh, that could be supported in the Srimad Bhagavatam when Juva Maharaj goes back to Godhead. Because when, when, the, when the Vishnu Dutas come to bring him to Vaikuntha, he's happy to go. But then he says, what about my mother who's so dear to me, who actually was, was the one that instructed me to meditate on Krishna? And the Vishnu Dutas said, well, look over there. And he looks, and his mother is also in an air, a celestial a spiritual airplane with the Vishnu Dutas also going back. And in the purport, Prabhupada says something similar to what I just said, is uh, how if one brings somebody to Krishna consciousness and that person goes back to Godhead, then you, by bringing him to the path, will also 
go back to Godhead guarantee. So in one sense, we don't even have to worry about our own liberation. We just have to give Krishna consciousness to others. And uh, Prabhupada had, had made this point quite a few times uh, to Satsarup Damodar Maharaj, the scientist. Or no, Sarup Damodar Maharaj. He said that if you just, if you, um, if you defeat the atheistic scientists, you will realize your Sarup and Vraj. I have the quote on my phone. So that's, that's a pretty significant <laughs> statement. And to add that to, to who? Uh, Sarup Damodar Maharaj. And then another time, Tamal Krishna Goswami, when he was, had a lot of responsibilities in India, <clears throat> he came to Prabhupada. He was a little bit like burnt out from the whole th thing because he was dealing with uh, a bunch of legal stuff. And he said, Prabhupada, I've memorized all the municipal codes of India, but I haven't read your books for six months. I've been so busy with this responsibility. I need time just for my own sadhana. And Prabhupada chastised him a little bit mildly. He said, more or less, I'm kind of paraphrasing. He said, like, why are you so selfish in thinking of yourself? For so many lifetimes, you have, uh, you have been trying to enjoy yourself in this material world. You just give this one lifetime to Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya will personally bring you back home, back to Godhead at the end of life. <clears throat> so in this verse, uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of immortality and fearlessness, Abhaya. Yeah, Abhaya means fearless, Abhaya Charnabinda. So it's a very exciting mission that we have to go out on a limb and to give Krishna consciousness to the conditioned souls, depending on Krishna for our sustenance and our maintenance. And <coughs> before joining the Krishna consciousness movement, uh, I'm from California originally, so I was uh, backpacking a little bit. I was 19 years old. I was uh, just had a backpack and sleeping outside. Where my my I, it was a bit of an impersonal idea, but I was thinking wherever the universe you know brings me, uh, that's where I'm meant to be. <laughs> so, but um, I ended up going down the coast of California, and I stopped by. I, it was either Santa Barbara or Santa Cruz there was some church that I found out would give people free breakfast. So I went in there, but uh, the, the deal was you had to listen to the sermon speak before you can get the free breakfast. So I sat down, I listened to the sermon, thinking maybe I can learn something. Um, but then I was walking around the church, and they had different quotes from different philosophers, like, put, like in picture frames around the church. And one picture frame said, that wonderful things happen outside of your comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone. So um, that kind of really uh, touched me. And ever since that, my whole motto was kind of like that, that quote for the next few months. I would put myself uh, on purpose in extremely uncomfortable situations. And by doing that, it more or less indirectly led me to uh, reading Srila Prabhupada's books and coming to Krishna consciousness. Um, but this, this idea of wonderful things happening outside of our comfort zone, we can actually apply that to devotional service also. The more we, we go out and uh, <clears throat> put ourselves on the line and perform austerities for the sake of spreading the Krishna consciousness movement, wonderful things happen. And we have, I've had many wonderful experiences on traveling Sankirtan, many ad adventures that have happened. And uh, I'll read of a historical adventure that happened. What happened was in New Vrindavan, there was a little bit of a confusion in 1970. And there were four of the first sannyasis within the movement. Uh, of course, Kirtananda Maharaj was the first one, but the next four were Brahmananda, Argamuni, Subal, and Vishnu John Swami Maharaj. Um, there was some, some controversial thing that happened in New Vrindavan. I won't get so much into it. But more or less the result of that happening was Prabhupada said, okay, those four sannyasis cannot preach in any of our temples. They cannot associate with any of our devotees. 
uh, since they're sannyasis, they should perform the duty of a sannyas and just go out and preach and just depend on Krishna. And uh, they they're not allowed to have any facilities because of this weird controversial thing that happened. So um, those four sannyasis were kind of like bewildered. They felt like they were re rejected from, by Prabhupada. They didn't know what to think. So they, they just started walking. Uh, they didn't have any money. They didn't have a place to stay. And they decided, okay, well, let's just depend on Krishna. So they decided to walk, I think it was like, 15 hours to Ann Arbor because they knew there was a university there in Ann Arbor, Michigan and they thought well there's a lot of young people there so at least we can uh, you know preach there um, so there's you know four shaven headed sannyasi with the robes and they're on the side of the highway with their thumbs out you know hitch hitchhiking they get picked up by some hippie guy they get dropped off in Ann Arbor no no they get dropped off somewhere then they walk to Ann Arbor okay and then what happens is after uh, they actually made a couple of devotees there, but then they decided that they should split up and they should take different zones within America and uh, try to establish some center or something. So Gargamuni, I'll just read this. It's just like one or two pages. It's really exciting. Okay, Gargamuni Swami suggests that they draw lots with the winner of each round having first choice of preaching area. Each sannyasi should have his own state to develop. Everyone agrees. An air of excitement fills the room. Gargamuni wins the first round. He says, Hari Bo. Oh yeah, at this point they're in Florida. Somehow they ended up in Florida. They hitchhiked. Yeah, that's what happened. They walked to Ann Arbor, hitchhiked to Florida. Now they're in Florida. Hari Bo. Well, I think I'll just stay here and I'll, I'll just preach in Florida. This is Gargamuni. Brahmananda Swami then wins the second round and chooses to go to New Orleans. Vishnujan Maharaj senses that Texas will be a more fertile field than Mississippi or Alabama. And previous to this, actually, Subal had left, and he had gone to India to help out there. So very quickly, it's all decided. Everyone feels better about the new arrangement. The next day, Vishnujan Swami leaves early in the morning with only a danda, his brahmachari assistant, Srinath, and whatever he can fit into a small shoulder bag. Srinath is a big, strong fellow like Vishnu John Maharaj, but he's a lot older than the rest of the devotees, like Jayananda. They head out towards the Florida, Florida Turnpike with no vehicle and no money, determined to hitchhike through North Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and on to Texas. These are places where devotees have never been before. They, they both do their whole morning routine, as in a temple, sitting by themselves on the side of the road. <coughs> After a few rides, they are dropped off by a general store in a small town in Alabama. Every head in that store turns around to look at them. No one has ever seen a devotee before with shaved head and robes. All eyes are on them as they walk to the edge of town and stick out their thumbs. Many cars come by, slow down, and then suddenly floor it, vroom, to take off again. All afternoon it's like that. Nobody is stopping. Finally, the local sheriff pulls over with lights flashing and gets out of the car. <clears throat> a caller has notified the authorities that two dangerous looking men are at the edge of town. And then the way that it's written, it's like slang language to, uh, to give the officer kind of like a southern voice. What you boys doing out here? Uh, we're just on our way to Houston, officer. Vishnu John is as polite as can be. We got a call about a couple strange looking fellas dressed up like women folk. Now that wouldn't be y'all, would it? Y'all are looking kind of weird to me. <laughs> and then Vishnu John Maharaj replies, No, we're monks, so we dress in the traditional cloth of the renounced order of life. You believe in God now, don't you, officer? We is all God-fearing folks in these parts, and we don't, we don't take so highly to strangers, especially if they dress, be dressed up like the ladies. You know, you're liable, you're liable to get killed out here. <clears throat> Srinath is shaking in his sandals, but Vishnu John Maharaj is as cool as a cucumber. Thanks for the warning, officer. We appreciate you taking the trouble to come all the way out here just to protect us. That's devotional service. <coughs> Protecting the devotees of the Lord. It's pleasing to God. Well, you'd be pleasing yourself if you get your ass out of town before someone... The mule, sk mule skinners get a few beers under their belt. No telling what they might do. Over yonder is the bus depot. And don't want to see y'all a second time, you got it? 
We appreciate your concern. Thank you, officer. And Hare Krishna. As the sheriff car drives off, making a right turn at the stoplight and vanishing from sight, Srinath heaves a huge sigh of relief. Minutes later, a couple bikers pull over on their Harleys to check out the saffron-clad Vaishnavas. In the deep south, with shaved heads and robes, you come across pretty strange people. But Vishnu John Maharaj always depends on Krishna. After a few tense moments, the bikers take to Maharaj when he mentions his friends in the Hell's Angels from San Francisco days. Making friends with the bikers, he gets right into preaching about how they can experience the highest bliss by connecting to the supreme bliss. The bikers like Maharaj's friendliness. They're only going as far as New Orleans, but offer the two Vaishnavas a lift. Srinath is nervous about it, but Maharaj immediately accepts. As the Harleys rev up, the devotees quickly hop on the bikes. Vishnijan Maharaj sitting... Vishnujan Maharaj sitting on the back of the motorcycle with his danda, riding down the highway with his long sika blowing in the wind, simply, simply chants japa. Yeah. And then this is Kalakanta Prabhu. He's giving his realization. Srinath said that Vishnujan Swami was like a Jesus figure to him. He felt that he was traveling with a spiritual person whom he thought was like Christ incarnate. There were one... There were one or two narrow escapes where they were almost beaten by bikers and redniks. Vishnu John Maharaj always came through with this faith, great faith in Krishna, and they were always protected. <clears throat> and then it goes on to explain, if you keep reading this book, <clears throat> that they, they, they do make, make it to Texas. Vishnu John Maharaj only has a pair of car tails, and with that pair of car tails, he attracts like large gatherings of people, starts a center, makes bunch of devotees, everything like that. So it's very exciting, uh, exciting adventure to spread this movement. And uh, in the memories tape by Siddhanta Prabhu, Radha Swami Maharaj is speaking. And he explains how one time he was invited to, uh, to a gathering of the Sri Sampradaya Vaishnavas. So he attended, and he was sitting on the side, and he was saying, how um, within that assembly, there are many sannyasis, actually. There, he said, like, the whole, row, the whole front rows, there must have been, like, like hundreds of dundas, like at least 100, 150 or something like that. <clears throat> and one of the, the leaders of the Sampradaya at this, at this time was, was glorifying the sannyasis that were sitting there and speaking how qualified they were and how strict they were in their, their, in their austerities and their vows, how learned they were, how many verses they've memorized, things like this, and that uh, for thousands of years not one sannyasi has fallen down in their line, and he just goes on and st keeps glorifying them like this. But then, towards the end, he puts up his finger and he says, but if you take all these sannyasis for, for many generations and you put them all together, they don't equal one grain of dust on one of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami and Srila Prabhupada's disciples, Lotus Feet, who is traveling the world and spreading Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. <coughs> yeah. And one poor port I had just read recently, Srila Prabhupada is explaining that the guru should not take on many disciples because it could be potentially dangerous because uh, he has to take on that karma reaction. But then he says that I am prepared to go to hell just to help the conditioned souls. And what can I do? And there's a, there's a quote of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains that every devotee within the Gaudiya Math should be prepared to shed hundreds of gallons of blood just to try to help one spirit soul come to Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> and in chapter 10 in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that I am adventure. Yeah. So the f one of the, some, some of the funnest and most exciting times in my life that have left deep some scars in my consciousness are as uh, long hours out on Sankirtan, and I look forward for many more to come. You know, times where I've actually felt most connected with Krishna, when I, when I actually like pushed myself uh, to do more. And if one takes this mission to heart, 
uh, if one becomes fixed in determination by Vyavasadinika uh, Buddha here, one pointed attention, because one is actually forced to control his mind and his senses, and he's forced to read Prabhupada's books, because that's where the potency comes from. And Prabhupada says that uh, even an ordinary boy, farm boy, when he becomes a soldier in, in the military, he, he is known as like a national hero. So he was giving this example, saying that even an ordinary conditioned soul, if he gives himself to the Sankirtan mission, he's immediately recognized by Krishna. And one uh, legendary devotee, Harinam Ananda Prabhu from Switzerland, is known as probably one of the biggest book distributors ever in ISKCON history. Many times he would distribute hardcover Bhagavatams and he would, you know, do a lot every day. As many days he did 400, 500, 600, 700, uh-huh. even up to over 900 in one day, just out in the street, you know. Just out. It's, in that, it's in this book, The Nectar of Book Distribution. It, he explains how he did that and basically he was just like walking to the post office to the parking lot it wasn't like a special event or anything like that but um, then he gives his realization how he did such incredible service and he said well first of all I have to uh, recognize that it's not me doing it it's uh, the desire of the Vaishnavas and the spiritual master to have these books come out and because it's desire, the desire of Krishna and the spiritual master and the Vaishnavas for these books to go out then who am I? I just try not to get in the way. You know, if I get in the way, my, my false ego gets in the way, then I block the mercy. But if I just don't get in the way and let Lord Chaitanya's mercy, then it just like flows out and the books go out. And even I can't understand how it's happening, but it's happening. So um, it's an opportunity for all of us to experience this, uh, this adventure and this life of Krishna consciousness. And my current understanding, at least, as the more we grow and the more we mature and, and purify our consciousness, we may have, we may gain different understandings than we've had before, new realizations. But at least in my current understanding, by reading all of Prabhupada's books multiple times and listening to Prabhupada's lectures and hearing different documentaries and things like this, is, yeah, our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition, you know, it aims at, you know, Vrindavan and, and meditating on Krishna's pastimes. And, um, but it, it almost seems like Prabhupada doesn't give so much emphasis on this, but more emphasis on trying to give Krishna consciousness to others. It's quoted again and again in Srila Prabhupada's purports that the most confidential service of the Vaishnava is to give Krishna consciousness to others and one does not even need to worry about his own liberation. Um, are there any questions at this point or comments or realizations? Yes, so for the marathon last year, in addition to whatever chanting I did with Ramalai, I would go out to other subway stations to an hour or two here or there, and, um, and, and people would give me money and I would give them books. You know? So um, you said you'd like to go beyond your comfort zone. So I was doing, I did 18 hours last year, I want to do 19 hours this year. Wow. I want to invite you to come because you know that's it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what day do you do that? <laughs> well, I started earlier in the month. I, I've been so busy. I was thinking of starting on Wednesday, just to, just to the end of the year, like to, uh, you know, maybe do an extra two or three hours every day, like sing, sing from 11.30 to 2.30, you know, uh, at different subway stations. Ron doesn't like me to use the same ones that he uses, because he doesn't want to burn them out, you know? mm. But I went to different ones, and I found it the most fun. I might take it up on that offer, offer, although I might be leaving soon. Really? Yeah, because I California was closed down. yeah, but Arizona is right now is sunny, and there's a devotee out there on traveling Sankirtan, oh. and I haven't been doing many books lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't distributed books for like a month or something like that, right. which is okay. I came here to like 
get into the kirtan and practice instruments and things like that. But I, uh, the desire is welling up in my heart again to go out and distribute a lot of books. And here is amazing. You can distribute books here, but we've found a strategy of working different parking lots that we do a lot more books, maybe like four or five times more than I would be doing here. Yeah. So, but if I'm still here, I'll, I'll right. go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Pranth Rajman Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.